Hey everybody, and welcome back to Life at Leeds with me, GWFM. Uh, we're going to get into the live comp today, uh, but brief to go over a few things uh, that's happened since the uh, start of the game, basically. So first of all, um, I realised that our scouting team was shocking, um, and I decided that I was going to get Derek Langley in as a scout. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, he's got some really good stats there, uh, well attributes should I say. Um, apart from adapt adaptability, but it's not really much needed when you're in this country. Uh, is judging player ability 18 and judging player potential 20 with like massive standout attributes and I had to bring him in. And he's on an £875 a week contract until 2018. Next, I decided to fill the vacant under-18s coach role. Uh, it is actually a former Manchester United player that's taken that role. It's uh, Nemanja Vidic. Uh, as you can see, his defending attribute is 19, which is fantastic. His determination is 18, which for me means, as far as I'm aware, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe the more determined uh, a coach is, the more likely they are to in increase all the other attributes. Uh, so I'm hoping that is definitely going to be the case. He's on £350 a week, again, until 2018, so relatively cheap. Then we saw our first departure, and it was Tamani Diragaraga. He left for Auxerre um, for £2 million, which I didn't think was a bad amount, considering he was only going to be like a backup to the Embrick Cup. Uh, I've got another player uh, in mind who can take up that backup role. Uh, next, we saw the departure of Ross Turnbull for two hundred thirty grand for a goalkeeper who's 31 years old. Uh, it was never going to be... Uh, probably second choice, let alone first choice. So I decided to move him on, free up some wages, and he's gone to uh, the MLS uh, to Seattle. Um, so yeah, hopefully he'll do well there. Then this one was an interesting one. We've actually signed uh, Carlson, Jesper Carlson. Just just come up on me. Uh, it was I think it was an agent that brought him to my attention. Uh, and he says he's a striker, but he's, I've seen him more as a winger. He's natural in both up front and both wings, like attacking midfielder left and right, but he's, he's actually accomplished at left mid and right mid, which I will be working on one of them. Probably most likely going to be the left side when he comes in, because what, what we've actually got in this this deal is um, that he's gone back on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, we've paid out, uh, well, we've paid out, as you can see, 220 grand outright, and then we're paying 775 grand over uh, four years. So... And they've got a loan back as well. So he's going to get some game time, which is one of the reasons why I let him, because he's only 17 years old, and we'll reevaluate him as, as soon as he returns to us at the end of the season. Next, we've got in, uh, another player on loan. We had to delay this until the Diago Ragamundi came through. Um, but basically, we've got Isaac Keese Thielen. He's coming in uh, on loan for the season. We're paying £21,500 a month, which I didn't think was too bad. Uh, paying all his wages as well, fifteen grand a week. Um, which I think was doable, uh, thanks to Diago Raga going out. And he's a four-star player. Um, he looks very good. He's got some good stats. Uh, worth noting, I have actually updated the colours uh, to make it a bit more notable as to what's good and what's bad in terms of his attributes. Uh, but as you can see there, he's, he's pretty well-rounded. A lot of 11s and 12s and 13s. But uh, in the key ones, you know, he's, he's fairly strong. He's fairly quick at 13 pace. Uh, his first touch is pretty good at 13. Finishing 13, of course. He's passing the 13 and vision 13, which I thought was very good for a deep line forward, which is how we're going to be operating. His three and a half star ability at this moment in time, actually, uh, with the four star potential ability. He's 24 years old. He's got one year to, to increase. So we've got him on loan from uh, Bordeaux. Um, and he's valued at 1.5 million. But Swedish um, international as well. Eight games. He's played no goals like, but doesn't fill really, with loads of hope. But he has been really good in pre-season. We'll come on to that shortly. Next, we let Luke Murphy go uh, for 70% of his wages on loan until to Preston until the end of the season. Uh, no one wanted to buy him. He was on the transfer list to start off with. Uh, couldn't really get rid of him any other way. Uh, and we took the first chance. Obviously, Preston are in the championship as well, so he's not going to... I don't think he's going to be playing against us, hopefully. Um, he's gone over there on rotation as well, which I, I wasn't really bothered. It's not about him developing or anything. He's 26 years old now. Uh, and I was pretty sad to see him go. But too many midfielders and a lot of uh, potential in, in key uh, for key players in the midfield area, which is obviously going to be key. Then we decided to sign um, Angelino on loan from Man City. Um, left back basically cover. Just in case someone came in for, uh, for Charlie Taylor. But also we needed a backup left back anyway. And I think he's gonna he's he's gonna be on he's gonna fit the bill really well. I think uh, three grand a week is a bit of a, a steal really. That's that's all it is, fifty percent of the wages. 
Um, and he's very, very good at looking at his uh, attributes. Then, a major setback, our first choice goalkeeper uh, suffered a broken finger after catching a ball awkwardly in training, so cheers whoever shot that ball. Then, Liam Cooper, they, they came in with a bid for him, did Wolves. Um, Dave has a part his Wolves. And it wasn't good enough. It was like worth about 1.2 million. I thought, no, I'm not selling for that. And plus, we're short on, on central defenders. And I ended up having a chat with him. Um, and I think I said, if, if they come in with a better bid, I might chat to, to Wolves. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Then moving on, we had to choose our uh, captain for the season, and vice captain. I kept it as Liam Bridcut and Liam Cooper, uh, mainly for the fact that the two other main candidates were both loanees, and I thought, well, there's a chance, well, one, they could get recalled at any point, and two, we might not be able to sign him permanently. But then I signed another loanee, um, this time from Athletic Bilbao, and ironically he's called Bilbao, so unite Bilbao. But he's joined us. Um, on loan for the end of the season, paying nothing for him as a four-star player. The one problem is that he is, if you can see in the bottom left, he's got broken ribs and he's not available for five to six weeks. Just before this game, against uh, literally we've got a game two days after this point, Marcus Anderson, who's been on fire in pre-season, uh, pitched up an injury for four to five weeks with an abdominal strain, which was not very handy, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but yeah, there's our full uh, injury list, there's a couple of youngsters in there, but the main ones are Robert Green, uh, Katana Baradu, who starts off injured, Antonsen, and the Bill Bow, the recent addition. Just a, a reminder uh, of the um, what the, the board expects from us, failure to meet one or all of these expectations could make my position at the club untenable. Um, and basically as you can see there what's left over from all the sales, we've got 400 grand left, uh, £250,000 per week. Um, is our wage budget which I think is pretty much is taken up anyway um, and then we've got uh, to finish at least mid table in the championship reach the fourth round of the FA Cup all it takes is a bad draw in the third round and you're knackered and then uh, EFL uh, Cup i.e. the League Cup um, it's reached the third round which I think is probably doable we have got uh, Hartlepool I believe uh, in the first round of the cup so going into the friendlies and it's gone really well to be fair uh, barring the Atlanta game but like I say you can see there we've not really played anyone major obviously the first uh, friendly I had to do was against Eastley <laughs> uh, the team from my last save on FM 2016 uh, we did beat them 4-1 pretty comprehensive really and we played uh, ASK Koflak uh, we beat them 5-0 away, they weren't really a, a, a massive team or anything like that. Then we played Deportivo La Coruña at neutral venue on our training camp. Um, and we beat them 4-1, it was quite a straightforward game. I'm, I'm very buoyed by our tactic to be honest with you. Then we had FC Stadlau, we beat them 4-2. We beat them 4-2. Um, then we played FC Admirate Wacker Modeling. These are the games that were already um, programmed in, I didn't cancel these. And we beat them 5 0. Pretty straightforward result. Then Rapid Vienna, who, who um, I got them in. They were quite a decent sized team because uh, I can't remember what I tried to play, but they cancelled uh, or they couldn't do it for whatever reason. And um, we beat them. We went 2 0 down. We came back and beat them 5 2. I was very pleased with the, the character of the squad. Then I had to play uh, Stockport County, Bood FM's uh, side from FM16. Um, beat them 4 0. That was very pleasing as well. So. Uh, that was good. And then York City, we beat them 5-0. Uh, Rich and Twitch had a had a save with them at some point. Well, you part of the journeyman save. And uh, he had a bit of success with them, I believe. And then finally, we drew at home to Atlanta. I'm going to say, I shit you not. And I've got the evidence as well. Here you go. 30 shots to their one shot. That's all they had. We're all over them, to be fair. And I, I, don't, I don't know how we, we lost this game, but I did make the changes just after that goal. So today's opponents are going to be Queen's Park Rangers for the live comp. Um, they've got a, a couple of decent uh, players in there. Amongst them are Stephen Colker, who definitely looks the part. Um, very strong. He's actually an England international. Got one cap, one goal. Um, and yeah, he's he's going to be a, tough to get by. Uh, they've also got Nedim Anoa, who, uh, who, if I remember rightly, um, is like, like lightning. Um, so he's going to be a very tricky, a very tricky partner as well. Uh, and then they've got Sandro with his angry beard. Um, looks very good as well. Um, so we'll have to see how we fare against him because we've got quite a young squad and quite a lot of experience in this QPR side. But Jimmy Ford piggy banks at the helm um, as well. 
Right, so this is going to be the team for today's game. Um, we're going to we obviously we've got a few injuries. Uh, we're going to go with Sylvester in goal, playing as a sweeper keeper. We've got Aileen as a, the right back uh, or wing back in the ki this case. Taylor at left back. Uh, Janssen and Bartley the defensive partnership to start the season. Uh, with Pablo Hernandez on the right, Dallas on the left with O'Kane and Brigcut in the middle, middle of the park. Uh, Keith Thielen making his debut up top alongside uh, Wood. So a few debutants: O'Kane. Um, Pablo and Hernandez, Thieling, Bartley and Janssen and Ailing. Uh, so there's quite a few. So I'm hoping it's not going to disrupt the team too much. Let's wait and see. Right, so QPR are going to be the, the outright favourites here. Uh, and our key man is Charlie Taylor. Uh, QPR's key man is Stephen Cockle. Just a word on Charlie Taylor. He... Um, he basically, he's set that in his mind, sort of thing, that he's going to be leaving on a free. I know it's early days. Little question: Is there a way to get him that get that removed from his mindset so I can get him to sign a contract? Just in case of do well, and he might change his mind. Just let us know in the comments, please below. I mean, but Chris Walker from Football uh, Guardian .co .uk says both teams are fairly evenly matched, and I think this will be a draw. Sandro and Robert Green will both be missed by the respective sides. I didn't realise that he was injured actually, Sandro, but uh, it's probably a good thing for us. So for the first game of the season, because I know we are the mighty mighty leads, but uh, we are actually massive underdogs actually in terms of odds. So I am going to. Su suggest going for we're huge underdogs so there's no pressure on us to succeed and let's go and show everyone uh, what we've got because I don't want to put the pressure on it's the first game of the season a lot of uh, new starters uh, i.e. the debutants uh, let's see how we fare and you know it, it's been okay I suppose but then I'm just going to follow it up basically with there's a lot more to come from you in a calm tone and it's going to get I was going to say no response but I did actually get a little bit of response so let's get into this game come on let's bring it on so I've actually got it set to key highlights. Um, I found that the extended ones, I'm just getting far too many. I couldn't even have a look at any, anything. I'm going to try and, and minimise the amount of windows on the screen as well. Um, I'm just having the match stats so I, I know if we're getting dominated or not. So we've got Dallas here. It's probably going to be like the old FM where it's just false highlight at the beginning. Uh, but let's just play it out. Yep, there we go. Right, early, uh, early ish highlight. And uh, it's a goal! Ch Charlie Taylor, is that? Getting on the end of the header, pa uh, Pablo Hernandez throwing it in, and uh, Taylor getting on the end of it, an unlikely target to uh, to aim for, but hey, if it works, I'm not going to complain, nice deep run, that, just how you like it, nice despairing dive from the keeper as well, something like that, probably not, but, but yeah, good start for us. Right, a highlight for QPR, it's his Bidwell's throwing it down to Jack Carvalho, Cherry, obviously back to Carvalho again, plays it through for Poulter, it's a great save from Silvestri. Trying to earn his, side, his place in the side here uh, as it's a corner. Cavalli whips it in. Headed away by Bartley. And now Petrasso picks up the loose ball. He's wide right. Swings it in deep towards the back post. It was Poltis headed it against the post from point blank range. And Thielen now on the counter. Can we create something back the other way? Great tackle to be fair from Bidwell. Corner, uh, no, throw in for us. Aileen throws it to Thielen. Flicks it on. Okay, no. Oh, trying to get on it. Smithies. The idea would be with O'Kane, to be fair, I don't think he's going to progress much more uh, as there's a chance down the other end. Oh, it's a great tackle, but somehow Poulter's has got the end of it. He's hit the post again! The post denying him twice. Here back to O'Kane, the idea is I don't think he's going to get much better, but I don't think he's going to be in my plans much longer. I'm just trying to play him, so then there's the likelihood we can sell him in January maybe and make some money, because he's worth quite a bit of money. That's why I'm thinking if we keep playing him, his, his value should stay up. Obviously, if he keeps playing like ridiculously well, then I'll have no choice because but if he's gonna play passes like that, then there's no point, is there really? Bartley plays it long forward. Lynch heads away. Now it's it's uh Nabakoto who has had a go from like the longest distance you're ever gonna see. And if I'd have gone in, then I would have been like applauding him. But uh, it didn't, so it's alright. Brick up. What can he do? Chips it forward, feeling now. Good off the ball movement, can he whip it in? He does! And what is there? 2 0, come on! As no wheel likes to say, if you listen to Radio Leeds at all, which you probably don't if you're not a Leeds, Leeds fan, get in! That's what he does. So, yeah. Feeling got it here. Loving the camera angles, by the way. I do like it. I feel that the game is a lot smoother as well. I found in the pre season friendlies that it doesn't seem to lag a bit, and I haven't seen any errors as of yet. I have got it in the highest settings, 
So half time is with us, and uh, I can't be more happy. Really, if you remember in real life, first game of the season, QPR absolutely destroyed us, beat us three nil. Uh, but I can't be any more happy than this, really. But I'm, what I'm going to say is, um, I think we have got a couple of yellow cards, like. But I'm going to just say, don't get complacent because that's one of the main things in football that, that people do seem to have in their in their uh, mindset is they do get um, complacent and as a result end up faltering. My Saturday side does it quite regularly. I'm just going to fill in the gaps with Faith. Uh, only one player. It was look listening passionately, and it is of course the players performing worse. Obviously, Alien's not playing as well uh, that well neither. But okay, and it, it, just highlighting what, I'm, what I mean. I've got so many centre midfielders, but I need to play him in order to sell him, in my opinion. But uh, QPR get the game underway, going from right to left, and it, it back look back to I can't even say his name. Let's call him Toto. To I think he's called Toto to at the end. I know where. Lap of honor, I know it even. Remember it being on the. That's Koto, so it's Coin Koto. It's a great diving catch from Silvestri. But uh, Soccer AM used to call. Uh, have this thing called the Lap of Anoa. Like Lap of Honor. Uh, but that used Anoa's uh, name. But here comes Silly East. It's a tough challenge from Lynch, to be fair. And could have been uh, a few calls for a penalty there, but there was nothing there. Oh, Kane has it. Plays it short to Dallas, who's inside. And now it's Thielen. First time ball to Wood! 3-0, come on! And this is, uh, this is exceptional. Chris Wood's not this prolific. Well, he's actually been alright this season, but he's not normally this prolific. I can't remember the last time he got two goals in the game. But yeah, Dallas fed in feeling. It has been a, a great addition, uh, as the um, pre preseason friendlies have, have been showing me. Uh, and Smith is a former Huddersfield town goalkeeper. Despairing dive. Uh, Unlucky.com. Right. I think they made a couple of changes, but Brickett has it. Finds Thielen. He's uh, been mauled to the ground by Lynch, and now Bidwell has it. He's coming field, chips it forward. It's a good ball to Poulter, to be fair. And knocks it back to Gladwin. He's actually transfer listed. Um, Koto has it, and hits it to sign that in. Not going to complain at all in the slightest. That's another highlight, a bit of a weird angle. It's crossed in, it's towards the back post. Bartley will get there. Hernandez with the free kick, it was. And then that played all the way back. A bit very loose pass to Ayling. I was just about to make a change and then the highlight started. Um, long ball forwards. Wood knocks it down to Hernandez. What can he do? He knocks it back to O'Kane. Now it's Thielen. Been so creative in this game so far. Can he create another? No, he finds Ailing. First time volley cross. Back post. It comes to Thielen. Oh! Nearly a debut goal. Sign netting. So yeah, I've just had a look at uh, as this highlight plays out. Um, okay, that is found. Sherry. It was a good. It's gone in near post. Sylvester's going to be really disappointed with that. I mean, he just went out like this, waving at someone in the crowd. It's a bad time to do that, mate. You know, you need to be, uh, you need to be fully concentrated. But look at this, my orange juice. Look, hi, that's what it was to me. Terrible goalkeeping. But they've made three changes. I've changed like that the layout in the middle, um, just because uh, I want to see what changes they make. So I'm gonna come combat them changes as the ball is played in by Ailing. Now Koto, knock it down the other end. It's coming to Polter. Poulter through to El Chiati. Plays a delightful ball to Joe Carl Valio and he's put it wide, which is uh, a bit of uh, a let off for us. I'm going to make some changes now. Uh, I'm just going to uh, take off Union O'Kane okay for Alex Mower and I'm going to bring on Kamar Rufon for Stuart Dallas. Uh, mainly Stuart Dallas because he's on the yellow card and Union O'Kane's looking a little bit tired. So that's the change I'm going to make. Right, Silvestri has it. Kicks it long downfield towards Wood, who will win the ball. Brings it down superbly. Gets by his man! What a goal for Wood, it's his hat-trick! Probably his first ever hat-trick for... The, the, the only hat-trick he'll ever get for Leeds, I think. It's 4-1, away at QPR. I was slightly worried when uh, they got that goal and they started. They had that near miss as well. But, uh, very clinical. Just looking at the match stats, and they've been all over us, really, in terms of shots. Um, but we've just been far more clinical. I'm about to make our final change. Uh, the ball played forward, but Janssen wins the header. Bidwell plays it in, f in field to Poulter. Back it goes to Gladwin. Looks to play it left to Carvalho. Back across to Gladwin again. And he's giving it away as Gladwin. And Mo, it's a good tackle for Mo, in truth. Feeling now. Charging forward at pace. Looks for a pass. He gets tackled by Bidwell instead. But Mo, it takes over. Finds Roof. Roof plays it in for Thielen. Debut goal! No, it's at the post. Smith is with the save afterwards. So I'm just going to bring on Calvin Phillips, uh, the guy on the front cover. He he's like the backup. Um, Ball winning midfielder that's going to take over from Diago Raga, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, he's going to come in. Uh, Pontius Sanson's going to take the armband. He's like third choice 
uh, captain. I know he's a loanee, but he's, he's not like the designated vice captain. But he, he's very, very good in that regard anyway, and from a leadership standpoint. It's another highlighter now, and, and Polter has it. Finds Gladwin. First time ball to Calvalio is good. Back to Gladwin again. That's Cherry. Finds Gladwin. Square to Calvalio. Nice little intricate pass in here. And Kayati finds Gladwin with a great ball. It's 4 2. A beaten is near post again. Silvestri. He needs to cut that out. Shocking goalkeeper. It's 4 2. It's probably a little bit too little, too late for QPR. But El Kayati, good ball to be fair. And he's been the, the assist machine for them this in this game. But yeah, nice. <sighs> and then diving. It was actually that way, wasn't it? But never mind. Right. Ailin is the one last chance before the end of this game. Thielen. He uh, kind of just kicks the shins of the, the defender. And then that's a full-time whistle. Get in. Great start for Leeds. And I'm just going to tell them, I'm going to say, that was really special, lads. Nobody gives us a chance, but you played magnificently. Congratulations. Because you've won for call, basically. You've won a game. You've won three points. Not the league. Congratulations does not mean that. But anyway, it's a good one. And as you can see, uh, some people are delighted, some are extremely delighted, and some of them just don't really give a shit. So yeah, man of the match was Chris Wood, obviously with his, with his hat-trick. Uh, Charlie Taylor had a good game as well, 8 out of 10. And I'm really surprised we did so well against uh, QPR's defenders, because Kalka and Noah are, are like top top defenders in this in this league, in my opinion. Um, you know, and you've got... Yes, granted, they've had more shots than us, but we've, we've held fairly firm. They've just had a couple of decent chances. I suppose they did it the post twice as well, so theoretically it could have been for all. But really exciting game. Really, I'm, I'm hoping the neutrals did enjoy that. Um, let's move on to see who we're going to play next. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Chef Wednesday next, away from home at Hillsborough. Uh, one of the main reasons is because uh, my mate Fry Badger, he's doing a save at the moment uh, with Sheffield Wednesday. Um, check him out as well, obviously, he's uh, up and coming. Yeah, we're going to do that game next, uh, and then there's definitely going to be another game not long after that, and that'd be Huddersfield uh, for Boot FM, uh, the game against his team. So, But yeah, first of all, it's going to be Sheffield Wednesday, uh, hopefully you're going to join us for that. So that is it for episode two of uh, Life at Leeds. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have, why not press that like button? If you're new, why don't you go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button. And th as always, thanks, thanks everyone for your support. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll join us for the next one, like I say, against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Until then, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.